Oops. Oh, hi, it's uh, Charlotte Pearson, the producer of Ready Row USA. I'm here with Stuart Shepard of Reckon Rowers, the recently completed uh, Atlantic crossing with uh, he and his four crewmates. Hi, Stuart. Hi, hi, Charlotte. Yeah, are you in England or in the Wales? Uh, England, so we're England. on the Welsh okay. border, actually. Oh, but, uh, I see, just, okay. Just, just, just in England. Because I, I finally figured out why you named your crew the Reckon Rowers. So we'll oh, get to, oh, yeah. we'll get oh. to that in a second. But uh, anyway, readyrowusa.com is our website. We are um, I will flip the flip the slides here in a second. Um, yeah, like I said, Reckon Rowers is our featured a crew on this uh, pop-up podcast, we're calling it. There's kind of little informal discussions. We'll be having our main episode with Four From Home on March 8th. And we had Project X, the two women from Switzerland, on this morning. And that was really fun. And I think you were there, Stuart. I really appreciate you making comments. That was great. That's okay. Yeah. And so Four From Home, they're the veterans who are um, raising money for veterans' uh, suicide prevention and PTSD treatment. And we'll have a few surprises. I think we're going to have a special guest on on the 8th for uh, to celebrate International, International Women's Day uh, month, uh, the month of March. The day is March 8th. And uh, we, we celebrated a little bit with Project X this morning with Marina and Sonia. So we are, yeah, all these are times are US Eastern time, UTC minus five at the, at the moment. And the series is sponsored by the Wave Coastal and Offshore Rowing Magazine. We really appreciate their sponsorship and helping us keep the lights on. Um, they have launched a new uh, page on their website, thewaverowing.com for uh, ocean and off, offshore and ocean open water rowing. So that is going to be packed full of networking opportunities and resources and lots of good information. He's really on top of it. His name is, the publisher's name is Stuart, or no, um, Craig Chalk. Thank you, Craig, you're the best. And we also have uh, Sykes and Resolute, our racing boat uh, manufacturers are sponsoring since last year. Uh, Burnham Boat Slings, one of everybody in, at least in the U.S. has, <laughs> that I know of almost, has a uh, Burnham Boat cover. They are really well made. And I love the company. It's up here in New Hampshire near me. Um, just excellent, excellent customer service, both of those companies. And my website designer and manager is Laura Williams of GoodInklings.com. If you go to my website readyrowusa.com. She designed that. I took this picture at Community Rowing in Boston. I just love it. It's like 5.30 in the morning and these these are new learn to row uh, students there on the dock. Yeah, I know it's just it's just my favorite picture. <laughs> was, so is that down on the Charles River, is it? Then? Yes, sir, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been that, there a few times, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll come by and we'll row. You know, if you drop by, I'll get a double or a quad together and we can do some rowing if, mm. if that's of interest. That dock there, I fell off it last fall <laughs> carrying a double. <laughs> uh, I bruised my ribs, but I did not crack them. Oh, well. Uh, all right. Um, this is uh, Project X, Marie and Sonia. They, this is like, I just love this picture. This is totally like their personality. Um, mm. You know, they they were so fun to talk to this morning. And Stuart, um, we are, uh, I, thought I, I thought I had a, yeah, I have a, a slide for you too. Yeah, there you are. So which one are you? You're on the left there, right? Le le left hand side for me, yeah. Yeah, 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 great. Uh, so I guess, you know, us lay people, what, got you into it? Like, what made you think you wanted to do this? And why this? Well, well actually, we're, we're um, I'm, I'm from a, a an area in the UK called Shropshire, a county called Shropshire. So mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a small rural county. And I'm a member of a rowing club called the Shropshire Adventure Rowing Club. And we row Celtic boats. So not fine boats like your rowing, 
charter mm -hmm. um, Celtic boats. And we have about 52 members of that club and 11 of us have rowed the Atlantic. So we've got quite a pedigree for a landlocked county where uh, 11 of us have now rowed the Atlantic. So quite, quite an amazing thing. So kind of interest comes from that. And so you kind of got the, um, you you see other people doing it and you kind of know what their experience is like. So that, that help you a little bit? Um, you, you kind of ignore that a little bit because everybody's experience is unique to them, I think. Mm -hmm, and every race mm -hmm. is unique to the, uh, the race that you run. But what you do get is a bug for it. You know, like we're, we're all quite adventurous rowers. So we've, uh, like as a club, we've rowed the Amazon from end start to finish. We've uh, rowed the Irish Sea a few times. We do a lot of coastal rowing. So we, we like to have a bit of adventure. And uh, rowing mm -hmm. a, an ocean, uh, something like the Atlantic, is probably the ultimate adventure that you can have. So uh, that's why we keep signing up for it. Don't you think so? Yeah, that is just amazing. Um... Yeah, I row on the Charles River, which is with a racing shell. It's it's adventurous for in its own way <laughs> because of the twists and turns and stuff. But I don't think I could row on a lake, you know, and go around in circles or something. I just I need some interest. But um, yeah, so that's amazing. And so this well, this was your first time, though, right? Yeah, all of us. Yeah, it's the uh, first time that we've uh, rowed the ocean, and um, it was just fantastic. Yeah, hard really yeah. hard you know we, we all wanted to uh, find a challenge that would really push us to the extremes of um your endurance both physically and mentally and it, mm -hmm. it really does you know strangely enough the physical side of it becomes easier the mental side of it becomes harder the longer you're in the race uh, and so the, the mental side of it is really really important that you pay attention to that and how how you yeah. um, approach things so you were how many days on the on the water uh well uh 40 days 33 40. uh 12 hours and 33 minutes yeah. an hour, hour ending time and again this was your first time personally right yeah yeah so what was the hardest part about or what was the like the most powerful experience that you had or was there a high point or a low point yeah, there were lots of those. I mean, we, we had an interesting experience that we our boat was holed by a marlin. So we got struck by a marlin um, 750 miles from home. Um, and it left a big hole in our boat in the bottom of the hull. So um, that was uh, that was a challenge because we had to row the, the last 750 miles with two of our lockers filled with water. And Did you to... have any repair stuff? No. We, we ended up doing a repair with the... Uh, the lid of a sandwich box. So we actually put that over the, it was quite a big hole. So the sandwich box lid was a fair old size. Mm -hmm. uh, and we put that over the top of the hole and it, what it did, it stopped water flowing in and out, but it never couldn't prevent the whole leak itself. So we then just stuffed the lockers as much as we could. And then we were carrying probably about a um, hundred liters of water extra on the boat, the remainder of the row itself. So uh, that was you, that was quite a challenge, but it was actually so rewarding as well to get over that. Well, to know that you had overcome that, it's just like, did it? Did you? Could you tell that it was slowing you down? Yes, um, I mean, we went down. We were covering round about between seventy and seventy-eight miles a day, and once we got hit by the marlin, we initially went down to about fifty. 52 miles a day so yeah. costing us 20 miles but then as we managed to retrim the boat and do lots of things we did get our speed back up to over 70 miles a day but uh, we had to do a lot of work to get that and did, did the marlin think that you were lunch or something or what was the yeah we think so um I, on the bottom of these ocean rowing boats you have reflective tape so that if the boat flips over and you're stuck upside down mm -hmm. then you're visible a lot more easily by rescue boats and so forth yeah and we we just think that that reflective it looks like a shoal of fish so it goes and attacks it there you go and, yeah uh, and the way that it hold our boat it went through the bottom of the boat and through a locker so the beak on this marlin must have been at least three foot long so it was a big old fish that came at us. Did he get stuck there? Or did he... No, no, it, it, it rammed into us, stopped the boat almost dead in its tracks, and then then went off and just wow. left us with a nice hole. Yeah, that's incredible. Wow. Mm. And did you see whales and things like that? Or 
The same day, actually, when um, mm -hmm. when we got struck by the Marlin, we um, later in the day, as we were all feeling a bit sorry for ourselves, it's almost like the whales came along to cheer us up. Oh. So we then had um, three or four whales come along and then just swim around the boat and under the boat. And uh, we got some of it on video as well. And that was just amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. And did, did were there any big storms or like, like, how do you deal with a storm? Does it does the boat go up over a wave like a? Yeah, most of the time. I mean, when you're sat in the, uh, I would say most of the people that are watching your videos are rowers, so they'll know when you're talking about bow and stern and so forth. So when yes. you're, you're sat at the stern of the boat and uh, your aspect of the sea, you've got the boat, the, the stern of the boat is about two foot higher than your than you are. And then you're looking at the waves coming at you and they must be 30 foot high when they're coming at you. And sometimes you'll ride them. So you'll get your mm -hmm. boat tipped up one way, go over the top of the wave and down the other. Um, sometimes you don't and it'll break over the back and you just get completely soaked through. Um, and those are all right. Then they're, they're lots of fun because you learn to uh, surf the waves a little bit and you can get your speed up to nine, yeah. 10 knots, which is fantastic. Um, it's the waves coming from the side that you don't see and they come and hit you from the side and you're just soaked through to the skin and then you're pushed off your seat and you're in the, you know, you're in the gullies of the boat and you, your shoes are still strapped into the foot, foot straps and you're not, you're, you're sat in the gully and then you get back up and then the same happens again a few minutes later. Um, but are you tied it, on? Aren't you tied? You're tied on in case you get swept over, right? Yeah, always. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one of the big mantras of ocean rowing is that you always say stay strapped onto the boat itself. So you mm -hmm. wear the safety harness 100% of the time. As soon as you open that door and you get out, you're strapped back onto the boat. Um, because it's true. If you come off, if you come off that boat, no matter how good a try you have at trying to rescue them, that person's going to be gone. You're, you're not going to get that boat turned around fast enough to yeah. get back to them. I think I saw a picture of one of the crews. A guy had gone went over yeah i mean possible? again yeah well it can i mean people have died uh doing ocean rowing but um yeah i don't mean he i mean he was strapped in and i i don't know if he went completely over but it you know he was he was looking at the ocean <laughs> oh well it does when when there's, there's people do capsize in the pacific boys when you speak mm -hmm. to them i think they did capsize in this year's race and that's okay that makes yeah yeah, that's horrific if that if that happens. Um, you yeah. do get a lot of where you're nearly tipped over. So you're you're on your seat and you're holding on to, uh, you know, like port side and you're looking down to starboard and uh, all you can see is ocean and then it, it writes itself. But it, it's all exciting stuff. It's amazing how you get used to it. You know, you it sounds a bit scary, but it's not. It's, it's, yeah. it's really no, I get it. Yeah. quite thrilling. Yeah, it's yeah, quite I mean, thrilling. And you just have the task at hand. You have to do it or you're not going to go anywhere, you know. That that is that is exactly it. You understand it perfectly. You're doing yeah. the task at hand, and you're just getting on with it. And you don't really think about um, yeah. the problems and the dangers. You're just getting on with the job. It's yeah, it's great. It's amazing how you adapt. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the human. What humans are capable of doing is just that's kind of what the powerful part of this for me. You know, like, and I want to get into a little bit of, of uh, who, who you're raising money for. But uh, any other like sort of epiphanies i know the uh, marina and sonia were talking about the glassy ocean and the stars at night and the reflection and it just looked like this big 360 star you know well i, I think I, I was listening to that obviously as you know and and i agree the first few days that we had out, out on the ocean it was like rowing on a lake it was yeah. just unbelievable there was just no movement on that water and it was fantastic because we we were great we had no seasickness at all on our boat no nobody had seasickness no we was going to ask you about days. that yeah yeah mm -hmm. it was so it was so calm so we didn't have that we struggled to eat which was a different matter altogether um and then the conditions just changed as the wind starts to pick up and the ocean moves mm -hmm. and and we had the same thing with the plankton so one of our crew is visually impaired so he's registered blind uh, right. Stuart richards and uh, even he, he he's got periphery vision uh, and even he so Stuart is the uh, second in from the left mm -hmm. even he could see the glow of this plankton as we were moving through the water so <sighs> as the bow of the as the bow of the boat went up and then down onto the waves, then the yeah. plankton would light up and you just have a stream of green light going down the side of the boat and then your oars going in. 
amazing and it, and and they're right about the stars it's it's so <laughs> clear at night you just it's full um and you just see every constellation we don't you know, see that, that here because it's all lit up you know mm, it, or, yeah, it's just amazing and yeah Whilst you're doing a job out there and you're working hard, um, it's surprising how little time you have for contemplation. Because <laughs> you're either you're either working, you're doing a job, or you're sleeping, and then okay. you've just got the bits of time yeah. in between. Um, but when you do have that time, it's just amazing to just lie there, and you never quite get silence either, because the boat's always moving. And mm -hmm. you know what it's like when you're on one of your boats. It's the sound of the oars. It's the sound mm -hmm. of the water. Uh, and that's actually a very reassuring sound. When I, when I came off the boat, the first night that I was um, on a normal bed, again, I couldn't get to sleep. And I was thinking, what's what's actually wrong? Why can't I get to sleep? And it was because I couldn't hear the water. And so yeah. mentally, I was just making that noise and the oars go. Uh, and then off off I dropped to sleep. And uh, You need you one know, of those baby cribs with the rocking motion. Yes. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else was I going to ask you? Um, oh, your first meal when you got off the boat. Oh, well, every, everybody gets a burger. So you're going to get the same answer on that one. So when, when you come off it, what you should be asking is, what's the first meal that you enjoyed when you got off the what? boat? <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. what I would ask. And actually, that was breakfast the following day because we came in at night. So we had a burger um, mm -hmm. in the late at night. And breakfast the following day was just having some fresh fruit. That you could go to and you could have as much fresh fruit yeah. as you wanted and uh yeah that that was fantastic and so uh, you had these sort of mres that i mean what granola bars power bars oh like yeah we had all that stuff and and actually the the food was a real problem part for me because it's all rehydrated things and, yeah. and we didn't have any hot water so our we we had a problem with the gas supply for our um boiler where it, it was uh -huh. gone for five days we had no hot water so everything we had was cold um and rehydrating the food uh, and the food when it's hot is pretty rough when it's cold it's really rough um so and, and that's no, use... yeah not, not detrimental to the manufacturers at all it, it can be quite <laughs> tasty but we just struggled with it um, yeah yeah i can imagine yeah. you just so, like so the get, get... go ahead yeah get, getting real food and real fruit again was just fantastic i can only imagine yeah well, that's great. I wanted to close up uh, with just uh, talking about these uh, charities that you're supporting through your rowing and what they mean to you and how people can assist in your effort. Okay, well, there's a thing I want to ask you about, Charlotte, as well, before we, we close up, mm -hmm. if we can. So the charities that we raise money for, we um, raise money for the Royal National Institute for the Blind, because one of our mm -hmm. guys crews um, visually impaired, yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. we raise money for them. And then we also raise money for a local hospice. So we're, uh, there's a hospice that works within our um, area, and they do fantastic work. And we've, we've all had friends and relatives that had to use that hospice. Mm -hmm. And so we, we managed to raise... Um, just probably over two hundred thousand um, dollars. That's for incredible those two, for those two charities. So um, we're really pleased with that, and 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 everybody in our community. So when you speak with Paul from home, what they've got is a fantastic community around them where they live, and they've raised a phenomenal amount of money. I mean, it was over six hundred thousand yeah. dollars when I last spoke to them. Um, yeah, I watched and, them their interview, you know, and I just I teared up because yeah. You know, they were yeah. so obviously so moved by their mission. Yeah. yeah, and they're great. And we had the same thing. Our our local, air, you know, where we live, we're all local people, just ordinary guys. Mm -hmm. And the whole community got around us and, and raised an enormous amount of money and things like that. So it's just fantastic. And it really does have an effect when you're out there rowing hard and feeling a bit depressed at times. Yeah. You've got all those people behind you. It, it kind of motivates you to just keep going. It, it really does have an effect. But the question I got for you, um, Charlotte, was yes, uh, your American accent. It's always uh, like we are wrecking rowers, but it's actually reeking rowers. Reeking. I, th I thought you knew about that you were saying wrecking rowers because you knew about the boat that we didn't make it with, that we actually did manage to trash a boat during our training. Awesome. That's, yeah. that's, a, that, I mean, it's like, you know, fulfilling the name, you know, it is. Yeah, that's, that's it. So we, we always, uh, everybody called us wrecking rowers, even when you knew how to pronounce it correctly. I but, was wondering, 
all those t team names are so fun to figure out. <laughs> yeah, but but it's actually a great um, uh, a great thing for people that are looking to do something adventurous like this. One of the key the key drives you've got to have is is to keep going. You know, so we lost yeah. our boat about four months, five months before the start of the race, and these boats are on an eighteen month order to try and get something. And we managed to get hold of a replacement boat and with no equipment on it. And then we had to tr do our training without any electronics and then get the electronics fitted. And really, it's about keeping going. I think that's what rowing in ocean does for people mm -hmm. and all the teams and all the people there. When when you're at the start of the race, the unbelievable thing is you've got all these teams that are in competition with each other, willing to help. Yeah, with anything that's that anybody else might want. It, it's, I heard some stories about that. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah, and the fact that you all know each other. I mean, Marina and Sonia knew you guys and four from home, and you know, you know. Yeah, really well, we cool. spend a good couple of weeks, um, really, where we're all working very closely with each other, and yeah. um, you know, you're helping out and you're having a laugh, and um, you all know <laughs> that you've got something ahead of you that's really going to test you. So yeah, that's you're, great. You're, um, you're you are racing to win, but you're racing yourself and that's the key thing well we are kind of coming to the end here um it they all take longer because i i could talk for hours with you but um shall jason, i ask, answer J, jason's question yeah shall i answer that yes one? please do yes jason um, is going so, to be one of our hosts on on the uh, four from home so all right well jason um it was naivety that's what wrecked our boat <laughs> that uh, we, we were doing our first nighttime row out on the Welsh coast. And the Welsh coast can be pretty rough, and it was quite a rough night. And we miscalculated where we were by about five miles. So we were five miles further west than we thought we should have been. Uh, and we didn't take notice of it. And um, we, we actually just rode straight onto a set of rocks. Uh, and if we'd, have been, if we'd have been 200 yards north or south, we'd have gone to a beach. But we didn't we went into the rocks and once it got hold of it we were the first people to write off a rannock ocean rowing boat you had a rent do they all have rannocks um most of them did i mean yeah. um project x they've got uh what they call the whale boats so which oh, yeah. i think mm -hmm. are designed in holland yeah. so there's a few of those appearing now but predominantly the race probably 30 of the boats are rannock boats in this year's race yeah so between the marlin and the rocks you've pretty much destroyed oh, yeah, your reputation <laughs> Yeah, if the boat hasn't got a hole in it, we're not interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And, you know, if you can jump on uh, with Jason and Ryan on the 8th and ask questions and stuff, we'd love to have you. And, you know, okay, yeah, it's, it's, always lovely, more, yeah. it's always more fun when people chime in and stuff. But uh, Recon Rowers, Recon-Rowers.com is your website. And we... Uh, you are role models for the rest of us, Stuart. So thank you. Right. No, well, thank you, Charlotte. And uh, you keep rowing on Charles River. And I'll, if I get over there again <laughs> next year or this year, then I'll give you a call. We'll show you a good time. We have we have some pretty fast Harvard eights that cruise up and down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, don't get you. You're in fine boats. You're going to have a rough a rough rower come on one of those boats. You might have to take care of me. I think. Well, you might be so powerful that we we just like. <laughs> race on down the river i don't know <laughs> good well let's stay in touch and thank you so much for for telling us about your experience this is great okay love uh, talking to you all okay. look,